Can Africa really unite? Can Africa really unite speaking white? <laughs> Can Africa really unite still speaking white people's languages? It's a very interesting meme right here, colonial languages. I'd like to thank um, Matthias Tekla. I saw this posted on his IG. Very, very interesting because we were actually looking at, you know, past history, you know, like how we got here, even to the continent being renamed Africa roughly around the time of the Berlin Conference. The Berlin Conference is a significant event that really um, seals the, the renaming of the continent, the continent of Ethiopia. Right? We were speaking about the Ethiopian Ocean. That now they change names, you know, switching names, switcheroo, playing the switcheroo game. But here's the interesting thing when we look at the, the languages, the linguistics. Because we did another video concerning Africa and African unity. Can we be united that Africa is a pseudonym? It's actually a pseudonym. It's a name that was imposed upon the continent and all the peoples, all the, what, 3,000 tribes, um, nearly... <laughs> It all depends on how they, they number the languages because I saw one count saying like 1,500 to 2,000 languages and they try to break it down like in some like 140 or something languages. I'm not too sure, but we know there's, there's buku buku languages and dialects, really dialects, you know, like even over here in the English speaking world, you know, there's people in the Caribbean that speak with a, you know, patois or a combination of maybe certain other, maybe indigenous, you know, African dialects and English or even East Coast, West Coast, you know, up North, down South, in different parts of um, um, the British Isles also speak different nuances of language and linguistics, but basically they all speak English. And all the Europeans they use, you know, they use the um, Latin, the Latin script as well. This is why our proposal is what I and I great um, patriarchs and even the matriarchs, you know, that were great, were focusing on the Ethiopic, the 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 Fidel, the Fidel to unite Africa, that many different African languages. Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, the patron, special emissary, right? Special emissary. Okay, here, here, here. Okay, let's do this right here. Pray to I right here. Let's do this. Let's put this on um, airplane mode right here. Turn it on airplane mode. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. We could bring up that, that, that word sound, that speech right there about why learn Amharic. Why learn Amharic from the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated back in the 1930s, 37, right? This is a time when black folks were learning, right, Amharic, right? And if you notice, when we look at this particular map right here, let's zoom in. Let's zoom in on colonial languages. Because this, is, this video right here is, <laughs> wow. I really give thanks for this right here. Because this actually brings the point really home right here. Can black Africa unite still speaking white people's languages? Can black Africa unite? Give thanks. Give thanks, brother. Yeah, yeah, right here. <laughs> okay. Because um, looking at the OAU, too. The OAU and um, Ketama Yifru. Ketama Yifru is another name that you need to look up. Ketama Yifru. Y-I-F-R-U, Ketema, K-E-T-E-M-A. He was the point man, the point man for the establishment of the Organization of African Unity, you know, appointed and sent forward to that purpose, and he fulfilled that purpose, purpose that our father, that Ketemawi Hala Selassie, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, gave to him to unite Right, or at least to bring together the various different African states and, and heads of states and the nations together to fight against uh, colonialism, right, in that first phase, right, of um, freeing up Africa. And so we look at the phase of the OAU to be that first phase of it. And there was the different groups. There was like the Monrovia, the Casablanca, different kind of blocks and ideologies. Right, different nations, east and west and north and south, were under like different ideology. But these different ideologies, one was called Casablanca, you know, Casa House Blanca White House, the Casablanca, 
right? And then the next one's called Monrovia. And I think there's something called Brazzaville. I heard about Brazzaville. But then also there's the Addis Ababa. Right? So there was different points of view on African unity. And even today, there's many different points of view on African unity. There's the pro-blacks. You know, this generation of so-called pro-blacks, you know, putting the fists up in the air. Black power, black power. But most of them don't even know the history. I mean, the real history. I mean, and when we say the history, to know the history in a um, objective, objective perspective. We're trying to take the objective perspective right here, right? So let's zoom in right here on colonial languages, asking the question, can black Africa <laughs> unite still speaking white? Now, let's look at Europe for a moment, right? Let's look at Europe. Europe, they've been at this um, European Union, the EU, since like the 50s. It's interesting, since the 50s. They've been at this whole EU thing since the 50s. Had a lot of ups and downs and all kind of things that was going through the Europeans. But they still are working at that EU, you know, at the EU. And they've made certain progress, a lot of progress. And if I'm correct, they called it the, the EU back then. Right? We already know that now the OAU right, has been disbanded. The organization, the organization has been disbanded right, for somewhat of a pipe dream of an African Union following after the so-called European Union. Have you peeped that? Did you peep that? His Majesty and the other, let's say, revolutionary right, African and black leaders on the continent chose organization. Right? But then we're in a generation now that don't like, they don't check for organization. <laughs> you know, some folks say they don't like organized religion. You know, it seems like they, they're against this thing of organized. It's like organized, being organized is not being white. I, I don't understand, you know, why some people might think that. They're, they're against organization, right? So if you're against organization, then that means you're in favor of disorganization. But they took the whole organization of African unity. See, it was organization was organizing ourselves for the purpose of African unity right but then the careless that, that careless um, post um, Haile Selassie generation you know after 1974-75 1974-75 take note brothers and sisters when we look at certain time periods certain periods in time a crucial period in time not just in what happened in the east right over east of the river Nile in Ethiopia but what also was happening over here in America what was happening in the UK that's why I pointed out Adam Curtis the Adam Curtis documentaries and Adam Curtis films I'd like to get into some of that in a little more details for those who are so interested but the African Union so now they call it the African Union in blatant so-called imitation of the European Union right even though we had our own original organization of African unity but even with that proposition there was a lot of challenges and that's why I mentioned um, Ketama Yifru right? and I give thanks Javier you know Javier <laughs> Shelley for mentioning that here 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 yeah I'm on the WhatsApp right yeah let's link up on the WhatsApp brothers and sisters gotta link up on the WhatsApp you know make those links um, you know, those connections right here so we can reason on these things, right? In addition to the vlogs, you can also have a kind of a regular reasoning on some of these very important right now subject matters. So Ketama Yifru, right? Ketama Yifru, there used to be a paid thing, OAU creation. I don't think that website is there anymore, but the content, I've seen some of the content here and there, but it was very, very well written. And they point out the challenges because, you know, like, for example, look at the look at the colonial languages presently spoken in Africa, right? The colonial languages. Now, of course, they, there's other languages, but these are the main languages spoken in Africa. So we see French, right? We see French all over the place. French is spoken in. Okay, we're just looking at West Africa, right? Including North Africa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, about 14 nations in Africa. Now, there's only 54 
nation states and then nation states that's the times of the gentiles gentile means nations the, they carved up these artificial nation states what we see you know on, on the map of africa today is totally at the europeans the european the white man so let's just say the white man because it wasn't just well it was the european white white europeans that's what we want to say white europeans because historically speaking from our own research there were black europeans like there's white anglo-saxon protestant and by virtue of there being white anglo-saxon protestant a duh you should recognize they were black anglo-saxon protestant half the story still hasn't really been fully fully told you know although we're struggling to get there brothers and sisters but here let's touch on this right here colonial languages so we see french spoken just right here looking at the the, the top part of africa right north africa west africa and also looking at a portion of east africa well, the place that French is spoken, I guess, as um, official language along the east is um, Egypt, right? We see um, Libya is totally Italian. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Tunisia is French, right? Then we have French, 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 14 nations. Just, just the 14 nations that you can see right here and this still right here. Now, there's 54 nations. 54 nations that means that 14 minus 54 hope my math hope my math is you know hope my math is is is, is right that would make about 40 40 other nations so with about almost one fifth of the continent let's scroll down here okay let's go on 14 15 16 17 Oh, I missed two. 18, 19, um, 20, 21, 22. Oh, Madagascar, 23. So 23 nations, just from the rough count right here, 23 nations might have missed one or two. <laughs> I hope we didn't, but might have missed one or two. But 23 nations in Africa speak French. It's not that they just speak French. Because when you speak a language, I know what you know about languages. Languages, you know, what's in a language? Language has, his Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie said this, and I share this with ones and ones. I don't know if they heard this before, if you heard this before, but his Imperial Majesty, Gurmawi Nagusinagas, he said that language is the key, right, of communication between man and man. And he said that language is a key of culture. Language is a key of culture. So that means when we're looking at Africa, we have a lot of half original black African people. All right? Just to use the conventional term Africa, right? Because they ascribe to that, right? They ascribe to the Berlin Conference. They ascribe to the renaming of the continent. And then they talk about African unity, right? Well, African unity. Now people say, well, it's not impossible to unite if we're speaking white people's languages. Hmm, okay. <laughs> Well, okay, let's look at the Europeans, the EU. The EU, right, they speak a bunch of different European, Latin, and Romance, and Germanic languages up there, right? But you notice something among the Europeans, right? Even though they speak different languages, French and Spanish, Portuguese, uh, um, German, Italian, so forth and so on, English, they all use the Latin script. So we have to adopt the script. And I propose what Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, Dr. Malaku Bayan, right? You say the patron and, and what the main founder of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, right? The Amharic, right? And the and the Fidel. The Fidel is our own indigenous script. Every indigenous language in Africa can be written, right? In other words, every African language can be written. Right? Even the unique sounds with the modifications that we have also in the Fidel. Fidel is what we call the alphabet. The Hahu. Hahu is another way of referring, you know, from the first two letters of Hape. There's different ways of referring. It's a syllabary. So it's phonetics, right? And this right here is, is a key. The key that we propose right here is the Ethiopian alphabet being used by all of the African nations. Ras, I, Adonis, I, Ras, 
Iodonis Tafari of the Lion of the Tribe of Judah Society. We propose that here, here, here in 2022, right? That all of the African nations should start immediately, ASAP, right? Like yesterday, right? To invest in the research for the feasibility of adopting the Ethiopian, the Amharic Fidel to write their respective languages, right? In the strategic goal of unity, of uniting. That means that once we all know the Fidel, just like right now, if you are a French speaker and when you write French and read French, you write it in Latin, right? So now if you are seeing a, a German woman, right? A German woman, right? You know, a, a German man, if, you, if that's, you know, if you're a woman, a man, but I'm coming from a man's perspective, you know, a woman. Just use this as, as an example right here, right? So you're seeing, uh, I'm a French speaker, so I'm familiar with the letters, so I could read German, but maybe I have to get the accent, you know, but that allows me the opportunity, if I'm so willing, to learn German. And most Europeans do speak more than one European language. So even though on the continent right, of um, Europe, right, they speak many different European languages, Latin or Latin-based languages, or write these particular languages in Latin, right? use the Latin script. I think the only ones that use a different script is Russia. Think about that for a moment. Russia and Ukraine and Russia and the crosshairs and all of this with Russia. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Russia, right, they have Cyrillic, right? Uh, a saint, an Orthodox saint developed a script. They didn't have a script, right, for Russian. So that was de developed by um, Caduce, uh, uh Cyril, Cyril, Saint, Saint Cyril. That's why they call it Cyrillic. So that's the only European we could say Eastern European um, country that uses a very unique script, a script that is different, right, than all the other scripts throughout Europe. And that might be also a point of contention between them and the other European nations, something just to think about right there, right? But even though the EU has been using, you know, um, they use French. French is a lingua franca. And they even proposed another language they developed. I don't know if you heard of Esperanto. I was actually studying that. That was an interesting language, Esperanto. It hasn't really picked up momentum, but I think it is being used among some Europeans. It's almost like a Esperanto is like the European Swahili, so to speak. <laughs> Let's put it like that. Esperanto. I don't know if you heard about this Esperanto, right? Esperanto. As I mentioned, I was studying it because the interesting thing about it, if you are familiar even for a few like European languages, right, white people's languages, you begin to recognize in Esperanz, Esperanzo, Esperanzo, is that Esperanzo? Yeah, Esperanzo, that it, um, it incorporates, it, it, it's kind of like a simplified form of bringing together the common roots, right, and common like words and expressions that are used in the European languages. So now don't be surprised if this language starts to come up even more and more and you hear, oh, Esperanza, what's Esperanza? You just like we start to hear about the, um, the, 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 the Euro, you know, the Euro, the Euro is very strong, it's, it's, a strong, it's a strong currency. So they have been able, the Europeans and their European Union, I think they started out with the Club of Rome, they started out in Rome, Right, at their center, just as we started out our liberation, right, from Addis Ababa, right, from Ethiopia, right, from the land of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the Israelites of Ethiopia, from that point of view, they started out from Rome, right, they started out from Rome, I think it was the Club of Rome and everything. And yes, they've had a lot of ups and downs, but you see how much progress, consistent progress, in spite of the challenges and difficulties they've had. So it's not a perfect unity, right? But when we compare it with the so-called the pseudo-African unity, that has a lot to be, you know, a lot to be, um, you know, a lot to be uh, looked for. There's, there's a lot that's, that, that's still missing from the equation. But anyway, my brothers and sisters, not to get off on a philosophical moment right there, but let's look at, look at the content again. 
right? So we got Spanish. Spanish in one or two places. I think Spanish, Spanish is only in one place, right? Spanish is in one place. Now let's look at how many places speak English, right? How many places? One place speaks Spanish and one place, I think two places, two places speak Italian. Three. Three places speak Italian. Three places in the continent speak Italian, right? Um, one place on the continent speaks Spanish, right? And then we have Portuguese uh, in a couple of places speak Portuguese, I think. Yeah, Portuguese, a couple of places. Yeah, in the south, Portuguese. You see other places that speak English, right? One place also speaks German, right? Portuguese. Then we see French, Madagascar, right? We see English all over the place. English, 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 English. And now here's the problem with this. You say, well, that shouldn't be a big problem, right? Well, yes, there's a problem. It's the same challenge that we also have over here, you know, with black peoples over here in the West, with the Beta Israel, the Beta Israel of the West, right? We have uh, linguistic challenges, right? And the thing about the languages is, since language is a key of culture, language is a key of communication, right? When we learn these languages and how we have learned these languages, like how has these colonial languages been superimposed all over Africa? This is a, a byproduct of the effects of the Berlin Conference, of the divide and conquer of the continent of Ethiopia, the renaming of the continent of Ethiopia. Now notice something, when we go over here to the west, I mean the east, <laughs> let's come from the west for a moment and look to the east, right? Let's look to the east. Notice when we look to the east, you see where Ethiopia is? Isn't it interesting? Ethiopia, what's the language there? <laughs> It doesn't have a colonial language. Yes, they do speak English. English is by the second, you know, the second, the second language. You know, it's the language used for, I guess, communication. You know, in this in this world system today. You know, but their main language is still their main language. It's still their, you know, the, like like the Amharic. The Amharic, even though, even though some groups might complain, right? The Amharic embraces. Right, embraces a great majority of the peoples because it has both the Cushitic, right? The Cushitic it has Oromo elements in it, Oromifa or Oromo elements like words, certain words in, in the language like dog and, and water, for example, you know. It has you know, wuha, wuha, wuha for water instead of my my is from the more Shemitic like the the is in Hebrew right and Kelb Kelb Kalev Kelb you know which is Tigrinya the northern but what I'm trying to say and show is that notice the place that was not colonized the place that was not colonized in Africa does not have a colonial language superimposed on it but the the border regions, right, like Eritrea, Djibouti, um, Somalia. Now notice what, what happened in Somalia. Part of Somalia speaks English, part of Somalia speaks Italian. You see the confusions there? Mm -hmm. What's that saying? Robeno says, um, you cannot serve, <laughs> you can't serve two masters. You can't serve two masters. Right? So look at the continent right here. Let, let's look at the continent right here. The continent has one, two, three, four, five, five. Okay, there's two places that speak Spanish. You see the second place. Five. It has like five to six masters. Let's go over this again. They got the Spanish, right? Which is probably the least Spanish. Then the next least is Italian. And then it seems like the most is, is English. It appears that the most is English, right? And then French is, is a very close uh, second, right? Close second is the top two languages, English and French. Now, you can't serve two masters. Why do I mention that? Because the English, white English people 
and white French people have a notorious history of animosity towards each other. Even though they work together on the world stage and as the Gentiles, as the European Gentile nations, you know, the, the, of these nation states, because we're in the times of the Gentiles. Just to make that clear to ones. Times of the Gentiles in the Bible means the times of the nation states. Look at Africa. Look at the artificial borders. Right? Those are different nation states. Who drew up those artificial borders? The colonizer drew up those artificial borders. When they drew up those artificial borders, circa, what was it, 1880s, the 1880s, the Berlin Conference, right? When they renamed the continent to Africa. And the word Africa in the Afro Semitic languages, the Semito Hamitic languages, Right? Africa, Africa, Fereke, Fereke means to divide, divide, to section, to divide. So the meaning of the term Africa in the indigenous language, right, to that particular region of the world, the Afro Semitic, the Hamito Semitic, right, the Semitic, Hamito, right, languages, right, Afro Asiatic, some might call it, right. It means divide and conquer. It means exactly what they have done. So how is this that they have renamed the continent that we know on maps extending over like 400 plus years, right? Where the continent is called Ethiopia, even upper Ethiopia, lower Ethiopia, right? Then we come to the Berlin Conference where they're cutting up a cake, right? They're cutting up a cake you know, slicing up Africa in a cake, and then we see all these artificial nation states, right? And then we have now these colonial languages that still rules the hearts and minds of these people. So the Africans who are under the French-speaking nations, right, like French-speaking, right, they're under the French-speaking, they are Francophiles. They are, you know, inclined to love the French culture and to also hold the French biases. Same thing happens with the English, English speaking black folks. You know how we become more of, of whatever it is that, you know, like, like we, we, we're among the, we go to England, right? We become more British than the British. You know, we go to France, we become more French, you know, than the, than the French, right? Spanish or wherever we are, Italian, we become more Italian than the day, than Italians. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We take on these characteristics. And now when we think about, well, we as black people, well, we, I'm a black English person. I speak English and I've gone to English schools and I look up to English culture and you know the English and the French don't get along. See the English and the French have a history of it and we've encountered this in a lot of different organizations where we have black people from different parts of the world. Sometimes it's very covert. It's like a cold war, right? Because we have more pressing issues as black people, but it still comes up. It still rises and raises up its ugly head, right? You know, our colonial masters, um, the psychology of their language. Language is a very, very crucial, crucial thing. Right? So we should not overlook language and linguistics when we're speaking about unity. Not that that means that everybody's going to speak the same so-called language, you know, or give up their mother tongues. That's not, that's not even called for. Let's look at the effort of other peoples, other peoples in other regions. Right? How many regions they have? They have like over here in the Americas, it's the Americas, North America, South America, they're trying to bring the Americas together. Europe, they're trying to bring Europe together. Asia, the Asian community, you know, trying to be all the BRICS nation, you know, like they have like India is considered an Asian nation. Um, China is an Asian nation. You got Indonesia, the Indonesian nations. You got Japan over there in that region as well. Australia kind of stands out on its own. It's its own continent. My point is, what about Africa? The Arab region, right? The Arab and the Muslim, the Islamic region, they're united by their religion, right? Islam, right? And also even if they're not all Islamic, because not all Arab, Arabic people or Arab-speaking Arabic speaking people 
are Islamic. But they even have the unity in those countries of the Arabic language. So even if they are Arabic Muslims in countries where the majority is the Muslim, they often sometimes in some of the countries that are not too fanatical, they have Christians. Right? Some of them, there's even some Arab Jews <laughs> as well. You know what I'm saying? But as far as Arabic people or people from that particular culture, the language is that key to their culture. So therefore, how much of our culture as African people has been compromised by these colonial languages? And also by no concerted effort is being made and has been made to address it. What has the AU might done to address the linguistic confusion. I heard that some are proposing Swahili. Right? Well, that's that, that's a that's a that's that's a start. That's a start right there. We're proposing the Ethiopian Fidel, the Ethiopian Fidel, right? To write all of the African languages, right? To communicate all of the African languages. Of course, there's a little learning curve right there, but the Fidel being a phonetic system is very very easy it's very very easy and if we take well what has happened historically with ethiopia notice something ethiopia is the only place on the continent that's called today africa since the continent was called ethiopia but the only place on the continent called today africa that was not colonized and it's the only country on this map of colonial languages of Africa that does not have a foreign European European language superimposed. Now this doesn't mean that Ethiopians they speak many different languages because learning even the Fidel, the Amharic Fidel, learning the Fidel it opens up, it opens us up to that. As I said about Dr. Malak Kubayan, he wrote an article back in the Federation Voice of Ethiopia years ago, Why Learn Amharic? And he pointed to that learning Amharic opens up our ability to learn other languages because of the signs and symbols and the phonetic, the phonetic um, um, organization right, of this system. Of this, of this syllable, uh, they call it a syllabary. It has syllables, my right? phonetic sounds, right? And these phonetic sounds can express every single African dialect, including the clicks. You know, African speakers, many of them have certain unique sounds, and these unique sounds that many African indigenous African speakers speak can also be codified. Right, and express through the Ethiopian, the Gutas, right, and the Amharic Fidel system. Right? The Abu Gida is also referred to as the Abu Gida. So we're proposing the Ethiopian Abu Gida system right, as a as a, a a a script, as a script that will enable future generations of African peoples that might speak different languages to become more familiar with one another's language. Just as the Europeans, right, on the continent of Europe, right, majority, if not, yeah, the majority of them use the Latin script or like the so-called English, what we call English letters, all of them use the Latin script. Notice that all of them use that the 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 Arabic or some say Hindu Hindu or Hindi numbers. You know the numbers that we use one two three four. You know how we write them today. Some say those are Arabic. Others say that it's really India or Indian Hindu. You know number system. But if you notice that they all use we all use the same numbers. Think about how that adds to the economics, financial um, 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 clarity, you know, because they all use the same numbers, right? So even if I don't know your language, if we're sitting down doing mathematics, we can do mathematics together. <laughs> so the same thing extends to linguistics, as we mentioned, right? Many European peoples, although their mother tongue might be, for example, French, right? They speak some or are able to if they're willing to 
speak Spanish because Spanish is written in Latin characters. They're able to, if they want to and willing to, learn German. Why? Because German as well is written with English or Latin characters. Same thing with Portuguese, same thing with Spanish. You know, we could go up and down the continent of Europe and we see the only exception, the major exception to that is Russia. Because Russians, they use the Cyrillic, the Cyrillic script that was developed by one, um, a saint, Saint Cyril, right? Saint Cyril developed the Cyrillic script that modern Russians use, which is a combination and a, a modification of some Greek, you know, it's basically like a Greek base, a Greek base um, system with some modification for some unique sounds that Russian speakers speak. So that's interesting too, when you think about it. The majority of Europe uses Latin script, except for Russia, and to see, you know, the geopolitical moves going on. Does that have something to do with it? Would it be different if the Russians used the Latin script? Maybe we wouldn't be witnessing all this Ukraine talk and sanction against Russia and Russia wilding out and, and NATO ready to wild out and, and, and forbidden for Biden. <laughs> he, 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 he been wilding out ever since, right? Ever since. But here, 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 brothers and sisters, once again, can black Africa unite? Can black Africa unite still speaking white people's languages? That's the question. What's the answer? Thank you, one moment.